Hey guys, welcome back to the Drone Camps channel. We have another FPV episode here for you and I wanted to do something special for you guys. I wanted to do this for quite a long time, actually. Uh, show you how to do a simple all-in-one DIY FPV build because a lot of you guys have been asking about this and you're wondering what, where should you get started, what components should you get, uh, and what are the current race spec components. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through a few of these and a really simple build. I just got some new gear from a friend of ours over at HGLRC. They do this version 4 flight controller on here. This is an SP Race and F3 version 4 3 in 1 flight controller so it has everything in here that you need. Uh, ESCs will be out on the arms and those are also going to be HDL RCs. Now the frame choice that I'm using is the GEP RC frame. One of my favorites, GEP RC. You can get those on the GearBest website. I'll put a few links to different frames down below. You can build any different frame that will accept a uh, 5 inch prop on there. So that'll be like a 200, a 210, or something like a 250. So uh, any of these components will fit on there. Now let's start out with the motors of choice for today will be the race spec Emax 2205s. You can get those in the link below as well. Also the HDL RC BL Heli S ESCs and these are the new awesome D-Shot ESCs. They already have D-Shot programmed into them so they're ready to rock on that digital firmware signal and that's super cool because it'll make a nice quiet strong and powerful motor uh, for your setup for your for your first DIY build if this is your first one. Now the next thing that I have on here is we have a run cam swift that we're going to run we also might switch out to that new Swift Mini, uh, but I think I'm gonna leave that Swift on there for this build. And they also sent me one of these, this is the Run Cam 3 that I have on here. This does 60 frames a second at 1080p and has really nice wide dynamic range on here because it gets beautiful full saturated color uh, even in the darkest of shadows underneath trees and when you go up and over trees it compensates for the bright light uh, this is one of the best cameras that i've seen this year for this uh, fpv experience now you can get a gopro hero session for about 300 dollars, i guess from best buy but these are 99 dollars, and they fit all the quads that have these little tiny cradles right here like this very simple just put a little piece of foam under it and uh, a strap around the top and you're good to go. Now the flight controller itself, let's go ahead and take a bird's eye view of this and I'll show you how easy this is to build and set up and wire up for your first build and I'll walk you through a few of those steps. And by the way guys, this is an Furry B 5.8 gigahertz circular polarized antenna and I'll put a link down for those below as well. I'll go ahead and remove this run cam 3 off to the side and pop the top for you so you can see what I have going on here. The antenna has a little cable that comes out right off the flight board and this plugs in right here on the flight board. So very, very simple to pop that on and off. Now I'll set this to the side and we'll zoom in just a little closer so you can see this board up close and personal. Now the first thing you're going to do is you're going to solder up your ESC wires straight to the negative terminals here. There's four of them right here. It's one big pad. You're going to put each negative terminal coming off each ESC and I have them just like this running from each motor motor number one two three and four and then you're going to take your positive wire and go to this other pad over here now you can do this on the top or the bottom of this flight controller it doesn't matter but I decided to put them underneath because they'll be right underneath there and look a little cleaner on top when I flip this over and show you guys now over here you have your USB connector for beta flight that's already flashed in there and you have a PWM port right here or you can run PPM or SBUS as well. So I'm going to run SBUS. I do have the X4R over here that I'm going to use and I'm just going to put a pin on there and solder it right straight to the board on the top and I'll show you where that is next. Now if you're wondering what this port over here is, that is the minimum OSD port for setting up your minimum OSD. It already comes set up pre-configured with minimum OSD. You have all your telemetry on screen like your battery, uh, your flight time and all that good stuff. Uh, so you can add your pilot's name and all that cool stuff if you go and you add a little cable on that. But that cable is not actually um, included so you'll have to purchase that separately. And the XT60 comes along with it. You can have it facing down like I have here, or if you have a battery on top of the quad that you're building, you can have it facing up. So now I have a flight controller flipped over. My XT60 is facing down and the motors are facing up. And there's a little 
arrow right here that's facing forward, that is the direction of travel for this flight controller. Uh, if you're set up to zero, zero, zero inside the configuration in beta flight, and that's normally how it's set up. So don't worry about that too much. Just make sure that arrow is facing forward uh, on your first build. Now, if I move this a little bit closer, let's bring it up to the screen here and get it to focus. Uh, I'm gonna show you a few different things here. Now, notice that you also have terminals on the very top here. I decided, I started out doing them up here and then I decided to take them off mainly because I didn't want the wires running over top of this for my build. I want it to be nice and clean. So I ran them underneath um, and there's pads on both sides. So they give you that option. And that's really cool. Uh, also on the top of this board, you have the world's tiniest boot button right here. You can just barely feel this with your fingernail when you push it down. It's even smaller than some of the other ones I've seen so far this year. Here's your VTX plug right here that plugs into the wire that will go up to your antenna from the bottom of this uh, quad setup. One of the things that I love the most about these boards, these all-in-one flight controllers, is the fact that I don't have to solder my camera wires through to my VTX anymore and the VTX is built in right here so all I have to do is solder on my camera wires right there ground 5 volt and camera wire straight out and it plugs into my camera and that's a really simple setup and that eliminates having to add all that uh, back in the early days we also had to solder on an, a minimum OSD module onto uh, quite a bit of different connectors on here so it really simplifies things that OSD is built into this as well so it saves you a lot of time now the receiver that I'm going to use for this build is the FR Sky X4R if you have a Tyrannus you can use this one it has a great full range on here you can go way across uh, I've flown in cornfields out in Minnesota and it goes way out there with this particular receiver so if you want a nice full range receiver these are awesome uh, and very simply you get one of these little cables in the pack and I'll show it to you right here on the screen and looks like a little servo lead right here this plugs into the S bus port you don't have to worry about this little white wire that's on here you can just remove this and all you need is these three wires right here so you're gonna line this up just like this not on this top row you're gonna do it on this bottom row here uh, you're going to have S bus first, which will be that yellow wire, and then you'll have your 5 volt, it's red, and then you'll have your ground wire, it's third. And so you can snip this piece off right here. When you snip this off, you're going to solder it to these three connection points right here, over on this bottom side right here. At the very bottom, you'll see ground, and then 5 volt, and for the yellow wire, which is your signal wire. Now the next thing you'll need to do after you've soldered on your ESC wires, you'll need to hook up your signal wires and they are labeled on here. They say one, one, two, three, four on here. Uh, and those will be corresponding to your motors in beta flight. It'll be set up exactly like that. Um, so if this is facing this way, this will be one, this will be two, this will be three, and this will be four. Now also another tip with this board, do not solder on this buzzer before you solder on this signal wire because for some reason the signal wire tab is underneath where this is going to go down on top of. Uh, I made the mistake of soldering this on because I got really excited that I had a buzzer sitting there and then I realized where is the number three motor tab for the signal wire. So be careful about that. Do that first and then do the buzzer afterwards and you'll be good to go. Now when you solder up your motor wires, do this as short as you can here for this particular build on this GEP. Uh, this is the Chimp 180. So I just did my motor wires as short as possible here. And it's nice that they gave you heat shrink with these, nice clear heat shrink. And I'm gonna heat shrink those up uh, once I get the build ready and finished uh, before I power it on for the first time. I'm gonna make sure I use my smoke stopper as well. And I'll show you that here in just a second. Before we do any kind of um, plugging in on the bench after you do your build, it's very important to use your smoke stopper. And that plugs right into the end of your, your uh, battery terminal there and uh, is between your battery and your build in case you have any shorts in here. That is a lifesaver. And this build is pretty much finished, you guys. All I have to do now is solder on my receiver right here and plug in my antenna and just plug in my camera. I don't have to do barely any more soldering except for my receiver. So I'll hold this wire up until it's the right way. And this just snaps on. You just push this down on top of that port and it should snap right on there. You'll hear like a little click and it's on there. And you can spin that a little bit and face it any way you need to face it uh, so that you can put your top on. And my camera's right here and I can plug that in back here. 
Make sure your pins line up when you plug it in so you don't bend your pins. And so next I will solder on my receiver right here and then I can start putting bolts on it. Okay guys, so like I showed you, I went ahead and soldered up my receiver wires here, the uh, S bus, uh, the five volt and the ground wire over here on the right hand side of that flight controller and it really was easy to build. I did use my smoke stopper just in case when I plugged in the battery to make sure that all my solder connections were perfect uh, and I didn't have any shorts. If you have a short, you'll see a puff of white smoke come out of that flight controller uh, or one of your ESCs or possibly your motors. So be very careful when you're making your solder connections that you don't touch solder from one tab to the other. Uh, and pay close attention. If you need to use some kind of a magnifying glass, it's always um, definitely something I recommend for these smaller builds. Now it was a pretty simple build to do and this is one of the reasons why I did this video was so that you guys could see how simple some of these all-in-one flight controllers are nowadays. Uh, OSD is really awesome here. I have my battery voltage right here, 15.1 volts, and I have my current amp draw right here. I'm not hooked up to my uh, radio right now, so it's only showing 0.6. Now it has my milliamps that are being consumed, and over here on the right-hand side, very far right, it shows me by battery time, the time that the quad's been plugged in. And up here at the very top left, you have which mode you're in, and right now it's just default and set to acro, so this is uh, going to be awesome. It's ready to take out to the field now and do a little racing, and I did it on the cheap, so it wasn't like super expensive to build this um, all-in-one setup here and it turned out pretty sweet I really like the way this looks and this is another unibody x-frame for this four millimeter 3k carbon fiber uh, gep RC frame pretty sweet so next thing I'll do is uh, bind it up with my radio and set it up in beta flight and I'll put my receiver up inside here but I wanted you guys to see how much room is actually inside here after that single stack and having the ESCs out on the arms like that instead of using a 4-in-1 it would have made it a little higher and it would have come pretty close to the way this piece of carbon swings around here but since I only had a single stack with that all-in-one VTX and I don't have any VTX hanging off the back here or zip tied up here like we used to do so now I'm pretty much ready to rock. I can put a piece of foam underneath my new Run Cam 3 and uh, go out and start doing some flying. So thanks again for watching, you guys. I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.